Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is my Author's Answer video for August 2021. The Author's Answer series was started by J.D. Archer and his writing group. Uh, J.D. Archer is also an author tuber and has a playlist uh, that I will link down below of his Author's Answer videos. And I also have a playlist of my own uh, responses to those videos that I'll link down below. These are reading and writing related questions uh, to pose to authors, and I figured it would make some great AuthorTube content. I've been answering one a month sequentially for the past few years. I'm up to question number 53, which is to talk about trends and whether or not uh, one should write to the popular trends, like, you know, the sparkly vampires <laughs> being the most uh, obvious uh, example since Twilight. And I suppose that example speaks to the fact that in writing circles, usually the answer is to say, no, don't write to trends. And there's a few reasons for that, and I agree with them, really. One of the big reasons is that the whole writing and querying and publishing process takes long enough that whatever trend you're writing to might be over by that point anyway. So, you know, it's a moot point. I also think it comes off as diminutive uh, when there's repeat trends like that. Like, I think of The Hunger Games, which personally is a hill I'm going to die on. I love The Hunger Games, and I think that, uh, if anything, it's underrated. I love it. <laughs> and, of course, it's uh, the most famous uh, YA dystopia, and there were so many that followed it, but they came to diminishing returns, and uh, fans were less and less impressed. And I think that comes down to the idea that, uh, you know, I don't know if it's publishers or writers or whatever might think that, you know, oh, they'll just like reading about whatever. But but I think readers bring actually a lot of demands to the table and they know when things feel watered down or repetitive and they uh, are not usually impressed. And then I guess another big reason or maybe the biggest reason is that I just don't think I'd be able to muster up the interest to write to a trend uh, because the writing process, as mentioned, takes a long time. So you have to have a lot of vested interest in the process and what you're writing about. And you know, the characters or the themes really need to speak to you or the plot, what have you. So I just feel like I wouldn't have the emotional energy to write something solely out of some sort of mercenary commercial uh, interest. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of artsy fartsy of me. And it kind of reminds me of uh, my one uh, writing group mate who got published, uh, Lacey, her novel, The Layover, right here. I'll link my review down below. Because I remember when she was working on this project and on earlier unpublished uh, manuscripts with her agent, uh, she definitely seemed more amenable than I might to the idea of uh, playing a little to the market. Uh, but I feel like at the end of the day, she didn't cater to trends, really. I mean, well, she wrote a rom-com, which that's just... Uh, an evergreen popular genre. But within that, I think she's uh, carving out a niche for herself in terms of writing about the airline community. This is about flight attendant rom-coms, and I think her second book that she's working on now also is about flight attendants and romance, and she's cornering a market, and that has less to do, I think, with a trend than the fact that she uh, is a flight attendant, so she really knows that world. So <laughs> it'll become her niche. And then maybe I'll end this uh, video with more contradictory statements because I do feel like I don't like reading trends for trends sake in most cases. I'm drawn to characters and themes and that sort of thing. But that being said, ever since I uh, read Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, I've been desperate for read alux so I guess we all have our push buttons. <laughs> And of course, Station Eleven being the hit that it was, there are a lot of books that are marketed as being similar to Station Eleven. And that being said, I found most of them to be underwhelming, uh, especially The Book of M by Pang Shepard. <laughs> it wasn't my personal cup of tea, although I know um, other people did really enjoy that book. For me, the book I found the most similar to Station Eleven that I've read so far is this one, the last one by Alexandra Olivo, which I think is on the opposite end of the scale where I really like this book, but I don't think a lot of other readers do. <laughs> There's a similar premise about a sudden virus that wipes out of a lot of humanity, now it comes too close to home after this last few years. <laughs> but I guess at the end of the day, as I think about it, what I liked about this novel ultimately didn't remind me very much of Station Eleven. In Station Eleven, the thing that I was most drawn to was the idea of uh, people finding each other and creating a new community in an altered world. And what intrigued me most about this novel, which took place far more during the, you know, crisis zone, was the idea of propaganda 
and uh, how it feeds into your perception of reality. Because the, the juxtaposition here was uh, uh, that uh, the main character was involved in a reality TV show survival game when ironically there was a big, you know, massive event happening on a global scale at the same time which I suppose some people found gimmicky, but for me, I just fell for the ruminations about the character questioning what's real and what's not real. And in that vein, I think it reminds me more of my favorite parts of The Hunger Games and how propaganda fits into uh, perceptions of reality. Well, there's lots of things I love about The Hunger Games, but I'll cap it there. <laughs> the next book I have on my docket that I'm hoping will be like Station Eleven is the Space Between the Stars by Anne Corlett, which I've actually had on my shelves for a few years now. I'm kind of hoping all the time that it comes up in my page 112 tags <laughs> when I, you know, randomly choose a book to read. <laughs> this one, I think, is compared to Station Eleven because it's about loners in space, people who have uh, been separated, and I think uh, Earth is, you know, once again, pretty much a no zone for human life anymore. And it's about, you know, the survivors trying to find themselves in an altered world. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for in this, but who knows? Hopefully I'll find other things that will interest me about it as well. I'm certainly hoping to enjoy this book once I finally get to it. But yeah, ultimately I feel like I can stick with my uh, original thesis, which is that you shouldn't write to uh, trends. And that in fact, uh, I think a lot of the times uh, these comparisons uh, don't often work. And even when there are these comps between books, sometimes uh, they aren't that similar after all. Hopefully you'll still find something else you enjoy about them. Hopefully all of these writers, at least I assume so from what I've read, just were writing authentically about things that truly um, made them passionate. Because I think that, no matter what you're writing about, is what really gives a book and a story its staying power. So that about covers it for me now. I will leave links to the books and reviews and such that I talked about listed down below. I should be back on this channel in a couple of days to do my latest Friday Reads video, but for now I think I should sign off because it seems like I'm running low on battery again. <laughs> so in the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone. Keep writing, and I'll see you next time.